Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another painting with Harold. I am Harold and if you saw the first video, uh, How to Paint Clouds, I explained in that video what I'm doing. I'm doing a step-by-step -step video that will end up being a series of how-tos but will end up being a complete painting when it's done. And tonight what I've done is I came in to the bottom half of the canvas and I went ahead and applied some liquid white thin even coat. I got out some titanium white, thalo blue, thalo green, and mountain mix. And then I've split my pile of white into two. That way I don't contaminate both piles. And tonight's video is going to be entitled How to Make Mountains or How to Paint Mountains. But I'm also going to go ahead and do the water in here while we're here. So I, I may call it how to paint water and mountains. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go right into with a two inch brush. A little bit of thalo blue and a very little bit of thalo green. And I'm just going to brush mix these two colors together right on the brush. And I'm going to come down here at the very bottom. And I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to start pulling in from the side level just level strokes across here and if you go to running out of paint just go back up get you a little more paint and you can see that that uh that thalo green coming off into that blue in places But just like so, I just want to pull it, pull it across, just in even, keep them as straight as you can, just evil little strokes here. And then we'll load up again, and we'll come to the other side and we'll do the same thing. And then our goal is to, in this middle spot right here that I'm keeping white, our goal is to uh, end up with what will appear to be a light sheen or a sheen of light across our water when we finish. Sometimes that works out for me, sometimes it don't. It just depends on how heavy handed I get. I think that little sheen of green in there, that little that little hint of that little green in that water looks good. It's just enough of it you can see, but not enough of it that it really overpowers it. I like that. Alright, then I'll take me a clean paper towel without washing this brush. And I will just knock out some paint. I'm going to knock out as much of it as I can. Then we'll come back here at the top. And I'm just going to start lightly blending across. Just real light. Just real light across here. From the light spot down. And if I don't, if I don't do it for you, and you're just not completely happy with the way that turned out, come back up. After you knock a little paint out of your brush, you can do it again. Just blend lightly across, just like that. And we have what can be water, or it can be whatever we want it to be in this painting. When we get to that point. It's still dark enough that if we want to come over and make it grass, we can. But our intentions are to leave it as water. So we'll try to leave it as water as we go on. All right, now I'm going to pick up my palette knife. I've been guilty here lately of calling this a brush. I don't know why. It don't look nothing like a brush. But I have. 
but I do know it's a palate knife, and I promise I wasn't drunk when I said it. All right, I'll pull out my mountain mix as flat as I can get it, pick up a little roll, just a little roll of paint out here on the knife. So maybe you can, maybe you can see how much I got there. I don't have much. Let's see if I can get it up here closer. There's not much paint on there at all. And I'll come in here in between these mountains and I'm going to come up and I'm just going to make me a mountain shape across here just a kind of a steep kind of a steep mountain but I want it I still want it to have plenty of uh, bumps and grooves in it I don't want it to be a straight line down kind of mountain. I want it to have some rough spots here and there. I think a I think a mountain looks better when it when it has that. Alright then I'll come over here and I'll put a little another little short peak right here. Just kinda carry it off the canvas over here. so we'll leave it about like that I don't want to destroy that little far off cloud we made if you watch that video these clouds were put in to look like distant clouds yesterday so that's what we're going to try to keep them as now when my hand disappears from the canvas all I'm doing is going back and, and uh, loading up my knife again, <laughs> not my brush. And then we'll come right up here. And we'll put us out a little, a little kick out on the side here. I like so. And we'll come over here with one. Not like that. Now anytime you're making a mountain, <coughs> your first concern is always the outside line of your mountain. You don't ever have to really be concerned too much with the body. Uh, like right now, the body of this mountain is, is not near as important to us because it's, uh, it's going to be filled in here in a minute when we start pulling the paint down. And if you've watched me make a mountain before, you know how we do that. Or if you've watched any of the painters on YouTube or Facebook or anywhere, or Bob for that matter, in the wet on wet process, you, you know about how mountains are made. The only thing is, with making mountains, people seem to have a lot of problems with the uh, getting the paint to break. And I really, I really wish there was a secret to that that I could tell you, but there's really not. I mean, there's, there's not a secret that I know of. Now, if there is a secret, I'll, I'll say this. I don't know it yet. And, you know, if, if there is one and somebody's out there, send me a private message. Say, hey, I thought you knew the secret. Like, no, I didn't know it. Tell me. <laughs> From what I understand, the, the secret is uh, practice, practice, practice. That's that's what I've been told. That that's the secret. So I guess as far as I know, that's the secret. Is is to just keep practicing. All right, then we'll come up here and we'll start. I think it'd look good if we had us a little another little rise right in here. Just a little something to stick his stick his head up out here and get recognized. About like so. 
Alright. Now that we got that much, which is pretty much the layout we want, we're going to come in here now and we're going to start with our knife. We're going to start scraping out as much of this paint as we can get. Just scrape out as much of it as you can get out. You can come right into your peak like that and pull straight down. Like that. Just pull that paint out of there. You can hear how hard I'm scraping this canvas. Now these things are pretty tough. You just about not gonna you just about not gonna destroy it by scraping paint off. But now I'm not gonna sit there and tell you you can't poke a hold of one. You can. I've done it. Uh, I was under the impression that you couldn't. But uh <laughs> you can. Believe me, it can be done. Alright, just come in here and scrape out as much of this paint as we can. I'm trying to be careful to to stay in our lines here. We don't wanna we don't wanna get outside of our line because if we do our mountain's gonna grow. And if the mountain grows, I mean there's there's nothing we can't fix, but let's don't fix nothing we don't have to. Make sure we got as much of it scraped out as you can. Now, some people go to the next step of taking a paper towel and going in, and uh, you can do this too if you want to. This is entirely up to you. You can come up here with a paper towel as long as it's small enough to get in here. But you can come up here with a paper towel, and you can take that paper towel. You get as close to the edges as you can. And you can wipe some of this paint off. But now, like I said, this is entirely individual preference. You don't have to do this. But, you know, if you want to, it's just another way of removing paint. And I will tell you this right now. You have to be careful. If you're using cheap paper towels, they'll... they'll knot up or nap up, whatever you call those little, those little, you know how paper towel tears when it gets moist? They'll do that and it will, it'll give you fits getting all of it off. Alright, the same two inch brush that I just made the water with, I'm going to, i tell you what, I'm going to go back over this just a little bit before I go up here. That's just a little too much sheeny. I like that way better. All right, I'm gonna take me a clean paper towel and I'm gonna knock some cover off of it. And you can see, you can see how much color comes off that brush just just by rubbing it. And this this is a dry paper towel. It, it don't have any thinner on it. This brush hasn't been in thinner. This is just a clean, dry method I'm doing here. Alright, now we can come up here and when you do this you can lay your brush down flat against the canvas. See how I'm doing that? And you can work that brush up to the corner or to your to your line and go to pulling out. And just pull it out and off the canvas. Just like so. And by laying that brush down flat, you can see, you can see where your, where your edge is. You don't have to guess. Like if you come up here and you try to do it like this, you know, you're either going to have to get up and peek over that brush, or get up real close to it and peek over it. But if you lay it down to where you can see that corner or that edge, you can get right, right there at your line. And just... Just pull it out. And sometimes when you're pulling this color out like this, you get lucky and uh, the layout or the shape of your mountain will just start automatically showing up for you. 
I mean, it don't always happen, but sometimes it will. I'm going to come up here, start pulling this down, about like so. And then we'll do this side, about like so. And if you pull down into the water a little ways, don't, don't, uh, don't panic right there. Because there's so many more steps that has to be done in this painting that that, that little bit's not going to affect anything. Trust me. You have not hurt your painting yet. All right. So, just like this, we're going to pull out as much as we can. About like that's all we need. I'm going to get in there just a little bit. Well, I kind of buggered that up, but we can straighten that out with the knife. Right. Now. now I'll go ahead and wash this brush. <coughs> okay, now we're going to pick up our Our knife again. I'm going to pull out the white as flat as I can get it. Okay, make sure your knife's good and clean. Mine wasn't good and clean, and I just I stained my white just a little bit with some blue, but it's not enough that it's going to hurt anything. All right. Then we'll come across, and we'll get about the same line of white on our knife that we got earlier with that mountain mix when we made the mountain. Alright, when you're holding this knife to make this mountain, don't put your thumb or your finger here because you're going to have a tendency to press too hard when you do. Just loosely hold your knife, just, you know, you don't, you don't have to have it to where you drop it, but just kind of loosely hold it, come up with the tip of your blade and put the tip of your blade right there at the tip of the, the peak and just just start just let that paint touch the canvas that's all this touch just let that paint touch and when it touches just lightly pull it just just lightly pull it that's all you got to do and just like that that paint will break for you and, and you don't really have to do anything. So that may be the secret. You don't, you don't do nothing. When you're actually trying to do it, maybe when you're messing up. So then come right back up. Just barely touch. Just barely touch. Because believe me, I am not, I am not doing anything but just, just barely letting that paint touch. Let me pull this a little closer where you might can see what's going on here. <coughs> Let me get another little roll here. Let me come right under this peak again. And we'll just start, we'll start coming down now. Just here and there, just, just. I mean, you can feel the the paint when it touches. Because if you actually feel it, your your blade touch the canvas, then you're applying too much pressure. Because all it's really touching is that little edge of the knife. I mean, that little edge roll of the paint. That's all that's touching that canvas. All right now. Yeah. We'll come in here. We'll come on this side now. And we'll start with this side. And we'll, we'll leave it about like that. That way, 
that way we can determine pretty much what we're going to do up there when we get to that point. I don't really know yet. Uh, I'm probably, I think I will. I'm going to go ahead. All right, I got to pull me out another, another flat spot here. You can refer to that as a runway, I guess. I'm going I'm to go ahead when I got this. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this on down. And I'm going to make that just go right in front of that like, like so. Just keep that paint pulled out as flat as you can get it. I would say that's real important in this step. Alright, then we'll come up here to this little peak. And we'll come down. And we'll bring it down at an angle across here, like so. Just barely let it touch. That's all you gotta do. It's just that easy. And, and I mean, I hate to say it that way because it wasn't that easy when I first started for me. I mean, it really wasn't. And I think it all really started clicking for me when I realized that the knife itself never touches the canvas. All that's touching the canvas is that little roll of paint. And once you get to where that's all that's touching the canvas, because as soon as it touches and you move it, it's it's gonna it's it's gonna start breaking unless you apply too much pressure. And it's easy to do. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that, that this is a very easy process. It's it's not it's not that easy, but it's not that hard once you once you get the hang of it. You'll say, "Wow, all this time, and I've been I've been fighting it." All right, then we'll come right up here to this one. Start kind of just pulling it down, I like so. I don't know if y'all seen the uh, video I post posted earlier today, but I went outside on my on my front porch and. We had a little rabbit came out yesterday afternoon, and we normally have two or three little rabbits come out every afternoon to to eat, but they usually come out so late you can't really get good pictures of them. Well, yesterday I got lucky. I had the boys put up my dachshunds, and uh, <laughs> the uh, little rabbit. Actually, both of them came out, and they uh, I took some I took some pretty good videos. I've got one camera that zooms in pretty good, and from about 75 foot, I zoomed all the way in on him, and I finally noticed that he's only got three feet. Three legs. He's a little three-legged rabbit. And it kind of looks like something's kind of wrong with his nose. His nose just don't look 100% right to me. But if somebody out there knows something about rabbits and you watch that video, comment on it. You know, if you know what's wrong with his nose, comment on it and tell me what you think it is. It may be nothing. But to me, it just it just looks flat, and uh, but he's still he's so pretty. I mean, he just and he don't he don't let that leg bother his eating. Man. I'll tell you that that jerky did some eating. <laughs> I've got some footage of uh, the other one too. I don't know which one's male, and which one's female, but uh. 
I got some footage of both of them. And both of them eat good. I told my wife, I said, that one right there, I said, we could call that a, a new lawnmower because that joker was eating. All right, then we'll come over here. And I'll do a little bit right there on this side. And a little bit right here. Just a little bit. I don't think it's going to take much in here. Might like so. I'll come back up here. And We'll work with that and see where we end up from there. All right, now I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of the thalo blue, and I'm gonna mix it in with this white that I took out of the pile earlier. And I just wanna get me a little, little light blue color here. It don't have to be real dark, just, just kind of light. And then I'm going to pull some of that to the side. And I'm going to put just a little bit of the mountain mix color in it. To kind of give it a kind of a gray blue color. Just to kind of tone it down some. And we'll play around with these colors and see what it, what it looks like as we as we build a mountain here. Alright, now we're going to swap over to the little edge of the knife now. And let me show you real quick the colors I'm working with. See, I got a light blue and then I got this same color and I put it over here and I bought just a little bit of the mountain mix in it and just smeared it around. It's kind of marbly. I mean, it's not, it's not too, too thoroughly mixed. <clears throat> and we may, we may start with that color. I'm going to pick up just a little bit of it on my little end, or my little edge. And I'm going to come right up to the point here. And I'm going to touch that white and start pulling out, about like so. To me, it seems like if you if you get right into the into the other paint, like if you touch the white, it just seems to me like it when you pull it away, it just it kind of just looks like and you want to pull these you want to pull these shadows in the same color. <laughs> there I go again. I promise I'm not drunk in the same direction that you pulled your highlights. Because if not, it's, it's gonna look, it's, it's not gonna have, a, the angle's not gonna be right. And for that illusion to work, your, your shadow really needs to come off in the same direction. About like so. See how all that's the same direction? Now see how dark that is? You can pick up just a little bit now of the other color. Wipe your knife off. You pick up just a little bit of this other color of the light blue. And you can come in there now and just, just put a couple little streaks in it. Just here and there, it don't, it, just, it don't take much. And just kind of, kind of let that color just sift around in here. Just, just kind of let it dance around. And it still maintains your, a good dark shadow color right there. 
and if you make a mistake or a happy accident and pull it color too far down into your white, all you got to do is come back over to your white, pick you up just a little roll, and come right back up here and go right back over it and clean it right back up. That's all you got to do. It's just that easy. But see how by pulling pulling the highlights this direction and then pulling the shadows that direction, it just kind of works out. All right, I'm going to come up here, pick up a little more of this color. And this is just like the big edge. You're just picking up a little row. And we'll come in here. And we'll just come around until we get to the other side over here. Just like so. Then we'll take a little of our light color. And just remember, it don't take much of this light color when you bring it up here. Because it's going to show up. Because light on dark will show up. And just like that. Just all it, all it is is just a little just a little accent color. It just adds a little gleam. Just that's all. Alright, then we'll get us another little roll. We'll come in here now. And we'll start. Just don't forget which direction you got to you got to pull your color. Because if it's not if it's not right, it's gonna let you know it. Through here like so. <coughs> and it'll give it just a nice little nice little illusion up here that you get a little ridge in there. See how that looks just like a little ridge? Pick you up a little more of your light color. And you can come up here and just, just touch it in places. There again, it don't take much. It don't take much at all. Just like so. And then we start working on our big one up here. We'll come in behind the our color. We'll start pulling down. Just like so. It's going to grow on me. I didn't mean for it to. But that's what happens when you when you touch it and get outside of that line. Alright, I think I got it halfway fixed. like so.
You see how I'm doing this? I'm working that, that little knife or that little edge right out to the right out to the line and then I'm coming back and pulling it in from the from the outside in. Then we'll come right across here. Here. And we'll come up in here since we got since we got everything coming this way. Not like so. Right, not crazy about that. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm going to pick me up just a little bit more of my white. When you go to putting color out doing this, it don't take a whole lot because a little bit goes a long way on a mountain. And I'm just, I'm not real happy with the way that turned out right there. So we are fixing to make an adjustment here. Come in here and pick up just a little bit more white. And I don't really. I don't know if I want that. I don't. I don't want that to come in front of that one. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll pick up just a little bit. And I'll come right here. Like so. Then I'll come in here and get me some more of a dark color. And I'll just cut that completely off. Like so. Then I'll show you here in a second what we can do to clean all this up. I guess the important thing is you've got to get that you got to get that shadow color down in there to make it show up. All right. Now I know we're gonna have trees on this side, and I'm gonna hate it because we're gonna probably end up hurting these clouds. And we're going to have trees on this side, and we're going to get into that cloud probably a little bit too. I don't know how much yet, but I know these clouds are going to go in in a little bit, or in the next couple, well, probably the next, uh, next step. All right, we'll come up here now for our blue. And we're just going to touch little places up here. And we're especially going to touch down through here, like so. Because that's going to give us a line that's going to separate these two mountain ranges. Because what we're going to do with the light color over here is we're going to keep it up on this side as much as possible. We're not going to bring it down too far. To our other color. We're going to keep that blue there to kind of give it a, a distinct line. And then we're going to come up. We're going to go to working on it now. Here and there. Just 
pull in a little bit here and there. Just like so. Just don't make a mistake and get too much of it to where it where it tries to uh, override your colors because then what's going to end up happening is you end up with a with a dominant color over here that we don't really we don't need we want our colors to kind of blend as much as possible That way it keeps that it keeps that effect going. Okay, now I'm gonna clean my knife off real good. Then we'll come back up and fix that mountain, the face of it. Pull out flat as I can get it. I'm going to come right up here at the top and I'm going to start just barely working my white back in on top of my shadow color over here. Just barely working it in. And if you can keep it, if you can keep it to where it looks like it's uh got a bunch of ridges and cuts in it well that's a good thing because a mountain should a mountain should have a bunch of ridges and cuts because the one thing you don't want a mountain to be is smooth and well unless it's that kind of mountain there may be smooth mountains in the world and if there is, and that's what you're trying to paint, then that's what they should look like. All right. Now I'm going to come over here and we'll grab me just a little bit more of the blue color. And I'm going to come up in a couple places and just touch my white and pull off just a little of the blue. Just a little. About like so. And then run in here maybe. And just kind of just kind of work that color around. Let it just kind of let it dance. About like so. Now you can always come back in and get some more of your mountain color, the real dark color. And you can come in here and just and just touch, you know, a couple places. Just to give it some contrast here and there. And it don't take a lot of that color to do that. It's just, uh, just a little here and then a little there. Not much. And it just makes it look like, you know, maybe a little shadow just kind of creeping over a point or something. Right, right in there. And then one place you can really get away with it is uh, out here on the outside edge in places. Like where that blue is. You can come up there and kind of mix some colors up just a little and, and it kind of helps right there doing that if you you know if your hands a little shaky and that way it'll make it look like it's not straight lines because you definitely don't want a whole lot of straight lines in your mountain about like that let's see how it rough that rough that corner up 
Now that mountain just looks so, so ragged and rugged. We'll bring a little more color right out from here just, just to be on the safe side. Because like I said, I don't really know. I know we're going to have some trees in here. How many yet, I don't know. But we're going to have some. I can see a dark spot right there I need to fix. I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of white and I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna come down just like so and we'll fix that. I see another little spot way up at the top up here. Right out here on this outside edge. And then you can you can always drop just little little white spots you know little accent white spots here and there and I'll show you we'll come back and we'll work those out too we don't need many of them up here just just enough to show an indication of the difference in color in case there's little spots sticking out that's catching sunlight up here you know little little peaks and little rocks that might just be sticking out and picking up just enough light that you can see it like right here we'll create one. Yeah. So wow, look at there. There's a little bump. And then come up and just clean the bottom of him up. Just like that. And if you wanna if you wanna get real fancy you can you can come in here and do a you know, like something like that. But I wouldn't do too many of them, because if you get too carried away, it's, it's going to look, it's going to look like you're trying entirely too hard, and that's easy to do. And believe me, that will, that will kill an illusion if you go to trying just way too hard with something. That comes back to that piddling. You know, when you go to piddling a painting to death, you usually end up with death. You end up killing it. Because it's so easy to do. I mean, it don't take but a minute. I love that that gray color right there. That just looks so good. I just I'm, I'm not happy with this area up here just yet. I got to get that. I got to get that smooth. It's not. It's just not smooth enough for me yet. All right. Well, one thing I got to get my color on the knife right. Because if you don't load your knife right, it won't come off right. And that's, uh, there we go. Now, <coughs> oh, I like that so much better. We'll put just that little black outside line right there. Now I can come in there with a little bit of that blue color. Light that side up some to give it a. Oh, I like that so much better. Yeah. 
way better. Maybe a little bit right there. Just like so. Yeah, I like that a whole lot better. Straighten the edge up. Just like so. Yep, and I can live with that. That's all we gotta do now. I don't even think it looked bad if I brought a little white up there since it's up at the peak. And just touched on a little bit of white up here. And just kind of blend it in. Let it just kind of let it uh, work its way in here. I don't think it's going to take much. I just, I don't think it should be a real dark color right there. Because of the amount of sunlight. Right, we'll try just a little bit. It's my last attempt. If this don't work, I'm done. and clean that up with a little bit of white. And I think that'll be right what we're looking for. Right about there. Just like so. Not like that. Yep. Now, there we go. Finally. Alright, now we can put our little bit of blue back in. Right up here that we that we accidentally rubbed out. And fix that little spot we just messed up. Clean all them edges up. It's got that blue all over it like that. Bring the white all the way out. Okay. I'm a lot happier with that. I'll tell you what we'll do. In this video, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and get it ready. <laughs> All right, picking up a two-inch brush, and we'll come up here and just lightly tap in the same direction that our highlights are running down. We're going to start down here, and we're going to tap up into them, just real lightly, real lightly. And we're not going up real far. I'm just I'm going up just a little bit. And I'm just diffusing the bottom along here. That's all I'm doing. Just diffusing the bottom. Just real lightly. I don't want to destroy it. I just want to diffuse it a little bit. Okay. And then we'll knock off a little bit of that paint. 
and we'll come on this side and we'll do the same thing over here now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white because it's not it's not any white over here very much and I'll bring it up in here just like so and get that dark color we'll knock it out because we don't want to come up far just just enough to diffuse the color in here a little bit. That's all we're looking to do. We're creating a little, little bit of mist at the bottom of our mountain. And then very lightly, we want to just very lightly let it brush flat and come up and pull up in the same direction. In the same direction that your highlights are. That they're coming down. You want to pull that brush that's the way you tap and that's the way you pull this brush back up in the same direction as your mountain just like that real easy and then if you got any brush strokes out here you can come out here and just kind of brush them out and they'll go away just like that and what you're left with is a real real light almost like you can see through the mist at the bottom I wonder if I can I don't know if I can zoom in on that enough that you can see it you might can see it the way the camera is right there I don't know there it is see how this is you can still see where that, that highlights coming down that's how light I was touching that but it still looks like it's got a layer of mist over it. Okay. And I'll zoom back out. And I'm going to say, ladies and gentlemen, that will be video or step number two along this process. Uh, like I said, I'm going to call this one. Uh, I, I'm going to go ahead and say how to make water and mountains or mountains and water because we got water here I mean it, it's it's very easily water so alright hope y'all enjoyed this one uh, thank y'all for joining me if you did uh, like the video tell your friends about me share it same old stuff as I always say you know like and subscribe but the channel is growing. It, you know, it's not growing tremendously, but I'm happy. You know, I mean, it's growing. That's better than not growing. <clears throat> and that would not be possible without you guys. So thank each and every one of you. I love you all. God loves you more. Y'all have a very blessed night. And hopefully we'll get step three done tomorrow. We're going to come in and we'll start doing some trees. And we'll go from there. Good night, guys. Thank you for joining me, Painting with Harold.